Hey, what's going on everybody? Jason here. Alright, in this video I'm going to be making a couple of friction folders. A lot different than the Damascus one I made. Uh, the first one I made, uh, not too many people liked it because I didn't have the, the thumb flipper on there. Which is understandable. And it was my first one. It was kind of big. Um, but anyway, at a customer request a friction folder. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and try to make a really nice one. This is my design. Um, it's a little thick, a little beefy, short, fat, beefy one. And uh, I'm going to make two of them. I actually want to try to make one for myself or sell it, not sure, but I'm going to try to make two of these. I've got a couple pieces of some 1095, eighth inch thick, got some brown and black micarta and um, for, the, for the handles, the scales, and I'm going to be using some stainless steel pins uh, for the spacers back there and for the thumb stop right there and a Chicago screw. Chicago screws for the the pivot pin of the blade so you can remove the blade and clean the handle on the blade if you want to. Uh, so that's it. This is going to be the blade. This is going to be my template. I'm going to trace it around there and start cutting out the steel and uh, go from there. So as you can go. see I've got a couple. I'm going to be drilling two 5 16 holes to where the pin is going to be hitting on the blade and I just drew some circles there and I'm going to drill those out first before I start cutting the blade out. Make sure your drill press is always on the slowest speed when you drill through metal. Alright, there's one. Three more. I got all four holes drilled out to the blades. Now I'm going to uh, get my hacksaw and cut off as much metal as I possibly can and then we'll take it over to the grinder. Alright, so I got uh, as much cut off of the blade with the hacksaw that I could. There's the really rough profile, and I'm going to go ahead and start grinding it. I got a little 1 by 30 I've got a brand new 40 grit belt on there, and we'll be reducing belts and grains. We'll go down to uh, <clears throat> 320 grit. But uh, yeah, this is it cut out. There's a two 5 16 holes, and we're going to start profiling it. Alright, there's, uh, there's a quick grind with the 40 grit belt, looking pretty good. I'm going to go move down to an uh, 80 grit belt. Okay, so I have a very rough grind, or profile, sorry, very rough profile going. It's down to 80 grit, looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do now um, is I'm just going to stick the template over it. We're pretty close. Now I need to drill the pivot hole. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that right on top, just like that. And I'm going to take a drill bit I don't care about. I don't have a punch, an actual real punch. So what I'm going to do is stick this drill bit basically in the hole and I'm going to hammer it down. I think that's about, uh, I think that was just about right. And I'm just going to give it a little tap, just to give me a mark. I don't know if you can see that right there. So uh, I'm going to drill out the pivot hole for the Chicago screw. Just got to get the right size drill bit for this and then we'll drill that one out. Guys, I got this profile pretty good. I uh, still need to go over it with a finer grit belt. Um, but for now, it's good. And it fits the uh, Chicago screw just perfect. So that will be the... That worked out. 
Now I took both scales of the micarta. I put a little dab of super glue here, here, glued both scales together so I can profile these at the same time. I took the template for the handle and I traced it over it. If you can see, I had to use a black marker so it's hard to see. But I traced that on there and I'm probably just going to cut this part off with a saw and then I'll start profiling the scales. Alright, so I got the scales profiled out. Uh, it's pretty dang close, I think that'll work. I will have to split these apart soon. I do want to drill the holes first. Here's the knife. Let's go up here, whoops. Let the sand a little bit more up there. This is, whoops, sorry. This is going to go just about up here somewhere. Fold back. Inside of there uh, Starting to look pretty good All right guys Here is I got the hole drilled for the pivot The Chicago screw and it slides on real nice and In case you're confused. Yes, both scales are glued together right now. That's why it's all weird looking uh, Do that to make sure that both everything I do on one scale is done on the other one So all the holes I drill everything will be a perfect match, but that's it um, we will be doing a little bit of trimming probably on the blade up here. I'm not going to make this too flush. You, if you go around you can see the blade does stick up just a little bit. It's not a big deal. I think it's actually better if it sticks up a little bit. It's a little bit better grip on your hands than having it flush and I think it gives it a little bit more character. So next I'm going to drill the holes for the spacer. I'm going to be putting a couple stainless steel pins in there. So that's next. Alright, I got the two holes drilled for the stainless steel pins in the back for the spacer. Um, you can see this will swing around, stop about there. I'll have the spacer right in there. The blade will stick out about like that. It's not too bad. I think it looks kind of cool like that. Uh, I definitely have a lot of room to grab onto the blade there. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so the next one I need to drill is the hole for the, the stop pin right here. <clears throat> That's going to be a little bit tricky. That's just going to be a little trial and error here. I'm going to have to line this up. Just kind of holding this. Going back. And... Um, may have to do a little bit of file work, file down the blade a little bit. But I'll go ahead and drill that out. All right, guys. So I took, uh, I cut three stainless steel pins from the rod with my hacksaw, and then I sanded them on my belt sander to get them just a size smaller because I used the same drill bit size to drill the holes in the scales so they won't fit. So I sand them down a little bit. And we'll do, and so we're gonna do a little mock fit right now. Looks like I accidentally cut the pins a little too small. Uh, I may have to cut, as you can see that one's in there. I will be sanding down the, grinding the scales down a little bit thinner, may not matter, but but that's the basic, got the gist of it. I'll be grinding this down just a little bit. I might grind this down a little bit more so the blade doesn't stick out so much. Um, but kind of, kind of like it, a little fatty, I mean, it feels pretty good. It's got a nice grip to it. Yeah, it's coming along. I like it. Okay, uh, so what do I do now? Um, I'm going to fit all this together. I'm going to grind down this just a little bit. I'll grind down this. I'll get the start making the spacer for it. And the uh, last thing, I'm going to heat treat the blade last because I'm not going to clean it up all that much. And I'll tell you about that a little bit later. But... <laughs> All 
All right, guys, so I started making the uh, spacer, and I've got some eighth inch thick natural color micarta, because uh, it's the same thickness as the, uh, the blade. So what I did, I just held it against the black micarta, used my drill press, drilled a couple of holes, and then I traced around this, and I'm gonna cut this and grind this off and shape it. I'm not gonna shape the inside too much till tomorrow, uh, or until the next time when the blade's completely done, and then I'll shape that because that's where the knife is going to go back over there, and then um, I'll completely shape that. But for now, so that's basically what I did. This is just got a big piece, drilled a couple holes, and then I'll draw draw around this, and then I'll cut it and grind it. Hey guys, I'm back. It's the next day, and I got all the pieces I need. I got sanded down the spacer pretty good. We're going to uh, finish that off when the knife is completely done, so we can get the proper curve on it. And I got the blade all nice, and I have it uh, ground down pretty fine. I'll take it to a wire brush before I heat treat it. Uh, next, I'm going to put on my maker's mark, and then we'll do the grind on it. Alright, so I got it polished up pretty good. Um, I went ahead, got my uh, maker's mark on there. Trying to get the glare in there. And I sanded the edges. Uh, there's no reason to have a sharp spine on this. It's obviously not be a, a bushcraft knife, so there's no need to... So I sanded the uh, edges just a little bit. And I'm going to take it to my wire wheel, uh, clean it up a little bit smoother, and then we'll uh, do the grind. Okay, I got the uh, blade all polished up pretty good with the uh, wire wheel. Now I'm going to do the grind. Um, if you can see on the where the cutting edge will be, I colored it with a black sharpie and then you run a drill bit the same thickness of the blade on a flat table and score a line. And what that'll do is give you almost exact dead center on where your, your grind is supposed to meet, where your cutting edge will be. And so when you're making your passes, you can use that scoring line as your guide on how close you're coming to the edge. Also, nice little trick, wrap some electrical tape, and that'll, at where you want to start your plunge line on your grind, and you'll get the same place every time. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start putting the grind on here.
All right, guys, I got the uh, blade all cleaned up, ready for heat treat. Uh, it's just a little bit of a grind there. I don't want to do too much. Uh, when you heat treat it, you don't want it. You don't want your grind all the way to a point. Uh, you could totally ruin it, melt it. Uh, you want to leave almost a sixteenth, a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even more. But uh, that's ready for heat treat. Uh, went ahead, took it to the wire brush one more time, and washed it with soap and water so it's dry, ready, ready to go. And this mock fit right here, you can see the plunge line just after the scales. That's perfect. Right there. That'll work. Starting to look like a knife. All right, time to heat treat the blade. All right, both blades are heat treated. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm making two of these. Uh, I'm not showing the other one because you would just be seeing double of everything. Uh, so I'm just using a simple toaster oven. Since this is 1095, I will be doing these at 450 for maybe an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes to temper them. And then we'll go from there. Alright, I got the blades, they're done from tempering, and what I'm going to try to do, I want to leave this natural scarring on here. I'm going to try something first. Uh, I'm going to take this to the wire brush on the bench grinder and just see if I can get all the color off and keep the scarring on, because I think that'll look kind of cool, and then have a nice, clean, smooth grind going. I'm going to try that first. If it doesn't work, then I'll just sand it smooth, but... I'm going to take this to the wire brush and see how it looks. Alright, I'm done with the wire brush. And that came out pretty good as you can see. Um, I got the uh, dark color off. And if I hold it in the light, you can see the uh, scarring from the heat treat which is what I want to leave on it's fairly nice in uh, the regular metal color but I got that nice texture on there which is what I wanted to keep uh, went ahead and washed them with soap and water I took the drill bits uh, I re-drilled out these holes just to get out the, uh, the scaling and the carbon and stuff from the heat treatment and did the wire brush and now we're gonna do the grind and we're gonna get these suckers to a razor and then we'll uh, fit the handle to it. But I think those came out really nice. All right, we got the grind looking pretty good. And now to my secret weapon, this is a leather one by 30 belt that I made for my grinder for an automatic strop and we just turn that sucker on we run some jewelers luge and we're gonna turn this thing into a razor Alright guys, I got this blade, both of them, stropped. And just to go over, uh, I went back over it with an 80 grit, then a 320 grit to get a 
as sharp as of an edge as I could and then I used that leather stropping belt on the 1x30 and I got this right now this thing's really really sharp uh, it's not a razor yet I'm gonna finish up the knife completely and then we'll strop it again but uh, so I just wanted to get the edge as close as I could and then so we can uh, start fitting the micarta spacers and now that we're getting near to the end uh, using some paper towels got to start keeping everything clean especially the blade but uh, they look pretty good that's how I was hoping they would turn out a little rough you know the natural heat treatment scarring and then a nice clean grind on there that's what I was looking for I think that looks pretty cool alright so we're gonna start fitting fitting these micarta spacers right, hopefully you can see this so what I'm gonna do I just mock fit mock fitted this <laughs> micarta and what I'm gonna do is you just close the blade over it like that and we're just gonna draw a line on the micarta and then start grinding it out and we'll keep coming back and test fitting and now at this point while you're doing this if anybody wants to take on making a friction folder you gotta be really this blade is really sharp it'll slice you up right now so at this point when you go on further be really careful with handling this but I'm just gonna take this and hopefully this little marker will work and we're just gonna put this go around the cutting edge just very lightly well, that didn't really show up. I'll have to find another pen, but yeah, you just draw there and then we'll start grinding it down a little bit, put it back on, test it. Guys, so I got the spacers done. Just took them up on the on that uh, cylinder sanding wheel <clears throat> on my drill press, and just uh, keep sanding away. And we got a nice fit right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's on the inside, just enough to help stop the blade. You just don't want to slam it against this pin all the time. So those came out pretty good. So uh, next, let's start. Uh, Fabby, fabbing the scales. Um, I think I'm going to grind them down one at a time first to about a quarter of an inch, maybe even less. Sorry, I know it's dark in my shop, guys. Sorry. Don't have much light in here. I'm going to start grinding these down individually to about a quarter inch, maybe less. And then, uh, and then we'll probably glue the scales and the spacers together and then finish finish it up after that. Alright, I got all the scales ground down. Looking kind of cool with this brown stuff. It's a lot thinner. It's almost down to about a quarter inch. The brown ones and the black ones. So, now it's time to go inside and glue these all together with the spacers, glue everything together except for the blade obviously and uh, then after that dries we'll finish up uh, grinding and fabricating the handles and it's almost done. Alright I went ahead and uh, glued the scales up on both uh, sorry I didn't film it I kinda got wrapped up into doing it and didn't stop uh, so what I've done I used a Gorilla two-part epoxy it's the five minute set and this is the folder with the brown, the brown micarta scales. So I just, uh, like I said, I should have shown it, but I just glued the spacer in with the pins. And then the front pin, I just put, this, this piece right here can be removed. I just put it in there so I could clamp it, and it would keep the same space of eighth inch between. And then there's the stop pin right there. And so that's just gluing up. Uh, it's a five minute set. I'm going to let it sit for a good hour, maybe more. I just want to make sure it's completely dry. Um, so I got two clamps holding this end where the spacer is, and then one clamp over here with the removable spacer. So you can kind of see through it. A light shining through the natural. You can see the pins through the natural micarta. Uh, so, yeah, so once this dries, it's just shaping up to handle. 
and screw the blade in and we're done. Hey guys, uh, alright the glue's pretty much dry. Um, so this came out really good. This pin, this pin stopped glued in pretty good. Um, next thing to do is I'm going to cut off these pins and we'll start uh, grinding and shaping the handle. Grind off all this ex excess glue. And looks like a mess right now, but nothing a, nothing a sander can't take care of. And then we'll start shaping it. Alright, got these two guys all uh, pimped and jimped using my cylinder sander wheel. I'm going to take these to my buffing wheel on my bench grinder and buff these out. Get them as shiny as I can. Getting excited. Alright, here's the two handles buffed out. They're pretty dirty. They got a bunch of rouge all over them. I'm going to go inside and wipe these clean with some Hanway oil. It cleans up the rouge real good. And then we'll uh, put the blades in and they're going to be done. Alright, the knives are done. Went and cleaned up the scales inside and uh, screwed in the blade. I don't know what happened to this brown micarta. It looked like it burned in spots. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I kind of like it though. It looks, makes it look rustic. But here's the black one. This one was for the customer. This one looks really good. Um, wow. First time making a couple of these. Uh, first time making a... Uh, friction folder the right way, I guess you would say. Um, I think it came out pretty cool. Wish I could get a close-up here. Oh well, my camera sucks. But uh, they cut good. I got them into a razor. Woo! Let's see, do the other one here. I'll probably keep this brown one. Yep, sharp enough. I think that works pretty good. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If uh, I made this video because <clears throat> I've been trying to find a lot of videos myself on YouTube on how to make a friction folder. There's a lot of videos, but there's not too many of them that really go in depth. And I tried to go as in-depth as I could on this if this helps anybody um, if you have any questions uh, leave your comments below the video and uh, I know I skipped through a lot um, you're gonna have to kind of wing it a little bit yourself let me see if I can zoom in here I really like the way the blades turned out got that nice natural scarring on there with a nice clean grind I think that's pretty cool. Gotta be careful not to cut myself. I'm known for that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, leave your uh, questions or comments at the end. I hope this video helps some of you out. Um, 
if you're looking to uh, make a friction folder yourself, uh, I hope this video did help. You don't need that much. Um, I mean, I'll pan my camera around for you, and you can see my shop is now a mess. You know, this is about all I have. Whoops, let me zoom out here. I've got two drill presses. I mean, this drill press was 60 bucks at Harbor Freight. It's nothing expensive. The red one in the back. Uh, I got that one and my 1x30 for 70 bucks off Craigslist. I found that bench grinder on Craigslist for 20 bucks, and everything else is a bunch of little hand tools, drill bits. And uh, this is what you can create uh, with just some basic tools. You don't have to be an expert. I don't think I'm an expert at all. Uh, you just take your time and do the best job you can and put in some detail. So I like it. I'm very happy with them. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one out there.